bullshit, horseshit, bullshit. Listen to this shit. Show of hands if you're married in the audience. Uh, show of hands. Okay, very few. Stupid. Okay. Stupid. We got, we got cameras on the audience. Uh, show of hands if you're currently in a relationship. Okay. Stupid. So half the audience. Show of hands if you're single. Okay. Oh. Oh. My relate. Okay, okay. Why in the fuck do I want to get married? Have fucking kids. Raise his family. What's in it for me? My kids grow up to be gay, become gay, or transgender, or I just plain old delinquent. Because let's face it, I'd rather never, ever, 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 ever have a child than have a gay son. Especially a gay son. I could maybe tolerate, maybe, maybe tolerate a gay dog. A gay son, fuck that. That nasty. Is that, is dangerous not, why, why in the hell do I want to have a kid? Only so he can die and burn in hell forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. So that's what's happening to most kids today. If you have kids today, you're just pouring gasoline, living gasoline into the fires of hell. That's all you're doing. Why in the fuck do I want a goddamn wife or girlfriend who will cheat on me one day or divorce me or split up, up with me one day? I'm happy being single. So, uh, like Natasha Bedenfeld. I'm single. I'm single. Oh, God, I curse God if I can't sing. I'm single. I'm single. I curse God if I can't sing. I'm single. I, I want to go. I want all I want from the opposite sex. It's for those hot top notch girls to think I'm good looking. And want to talk to me. Yeah, come out, come over and talk. We just talk. I want the friend zone, but only because they think I'm good looking. You see? Then I can go home. I can talk to. I can talk to any goddamn girl I want, and I want the, the female so I can measure the forms and see mine be, to be longer. Everything else, that's the red pill too, bitch. Love, <laughs> no such animal. Couples stay together, just as long as each one strokes each other's private parts and makes them feel good. And then when the kid comes on the way, you got the baggage. You can't concentrate on making each other feel good anymore. You ought to raise that brat, who nine times out of ten, you he may get lucky. Oh, blessed by God, how we see it, and we get a nice, godly, well grounded, smart, loving, kind son or daughter. But chances are you're gonna get a delinquent, you're gonna get somebody who rebels, you're gonna get someone who turns into a snotty attitude, unloving. Especially in today's society, you're gonna probably get a, end up with a gay son or daughter with a, a, a homo, a lesbian. No homo, no homo, no homo, bitch. I wish I could ask God what the fuck causes homosexuality. If God hates it so much, why in the fuck does he? Why why in the fuck so, are so many people turning queer? I'm not talking about. I'm talking about. I know a guy, Garrett Sutherland. He was raised in a Christian home with two fine, born-again, blood-washed children of God, Gary and Mary Sutherland. They took him to church every time the doors were open. They loved on him. Yet today, he's as queer as a football bat. Queer as a three-dollar bill. What the fuck happened? i tell you what happened. He was... 
He was kind of chubby. He probably got so hurt by the females, no no female would ever notice his fat ass. And she, so he had to take what he could get. What the fuck? Call, what about people who say they're born gay? Well, Freud said every one of us were born with both homosexual and heterosexual tendencies. But we gravitate to our, towards heterosexuality when we see the our mom and dad, the way they act together. The way the dad is a tough guy, thinks with the head with his head, but the mother is a soft woman, thinks with the heart, and together they come, come make a, a one complete entity. But that doesn't answer the question. There are many people who were raised in such homes that they turned queers a football bat. What the fuck happened? What the fuck happened? What the fuck happened? I tell you something. If I if I was queer, and I truly thought I was born good that way, I'd be cursing God, damn not for making me this way, only so he could condemn me. Right, let me tell you something. Sex is the closest thing to feeling spiritual you ever get. Nothing can make you feel as spiritual as sex does. And when God tells you, no, you can't have sex, you're queer. Let me tell you something. There's no point in living if you can't have the, uh, the ecstasy of climax. No fucking point. You might as well put not my, my friend Jason Burch said back in 1990. He said, quote, if I ever got castrated, it'd be, it'd be magnum 357 times. Because if you can't feel the ecstasy of climax, why live? Even if you do got Jesus in your life. You can't see Jesus, you have to have faith. But you can damn sure feel that ecstasy. Woo wee! You can damn sure see those top notch girls. And the Bible has a remedy for guys and, and women who lust. How, who, if you have a problem with lust, Paul the Apostle writes. And if a man cannot contain himself, let him let them marry. For it is better to marry than to burn. That doesn't mean not being burned in hell. That means it is better to marry. We can get your rocks off with your partner than uh, constantly be desiring, than to constantly be horny and having to suppress it. But if you are gay, what recourse do you have? Oh. They'll tell you this fucking bull shit. Oh, that's what crossed the bear. Maybe God gave you this to make you stronger. I don't give a good God damn about being stronger. I want satisfaction and I want it now. I don't want to have to wait for some pie in the sky that I have have serious doubts if that's really a life after death that lasts forever. Sure, yeah, yeah. When you die, when you're dying, you may think you're going moving in there and after life. And because I won't get into because there's the dichotomy and the human psyche. Everyone wants order, not chaos. And the way to have order is to love one another, to promote the well-being of everybody, so everybody can live. But this is infeasible because. Everybody cannot, because number one, we're selfish human beings. At the same time, we want to be king. We want to have a, our way. And then once we have our way, we want everybody to be happy. Just as long as we get, we're getting our way. And, then, and when you die, your your dying mind tries to set, tries to let you go out. Things that's order, not chaos. Because the human spirit hates chaos. And then when in the afterlife, when you sort everything out according to the illusion of the near-death experience you're having, your mind convinces you that you're going to live forever and ever and ever in ecstasy. It's only going to get better. And you get so caught up in the ecstasy, you totally forget. You totally have no clue when 
the light finally do go out and your brain finally does irreversibly shut down and die. You never see the doctors coming. You are thinking you're going to live forever and ever and ever and next one, BAM! You no longer exist. Look, until I see consciousness demonstrated in me, my body is rotten. When my body is rotting and my brain has been destroyed, they, they shred my brain with a shredder. And see, if I'm still conscious, until I see this, I will not believe. I'm going to believe in my head and the life after death because if there's no life after death, then that means Jesus did not rise from the dead. If you don't believe Jesus rose from the dead, you're going to burn in hell forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. I tell you, man, can I get the, can I get a witness up in here? But my heart severely doubts whether there's life after death. That's my biggest fear. I'm terrified of dying. I'm terrified that death is at the end. I'm terrified I ha I'm having a blissful near-death experience of the thought that it's just going to be an illusion to make me think that I'm going to live forever and ever and ever so that I can easily transition into nothingness. And fuck this and fuck that and fuck you too if you don't watch this goddamn video. Son of a bitch. Shit.